Om Tat Sat. Welcome to Gyan Bhakti. We are currently exploring the scripture mysticism of Srimad Bhagavatam. Commentary is by my worshipful Guruji, Swami Jyotirmayanand Ji Maharaj, narrated by myself, Swami Nikhilanand. Currently, we are studying the glories of Lord Krishna and his various leelas as a child. So today, in today's satsang, we will be discussing Yashoda's cosmic vision. One day, Yashoda was showering her love on the infant Krishna as he drank her milk. Noticing that he had taken lots of milk, Yashoda wondered how he could possibly digest so much. Catching her thought, Krishna suddenly opened his mouth and yawned. As she looked into that wide open mouth, Mother Yashoda entered into a state of cosmic consciousness and saw a vast space. All the luminous stars, the entire universe with all its details and its countless beings. All that exists was within the mouth of Krishna. Overwhelmed, she trembled and closed her eyes. Another episode happened when he was also eating mud. When he was a baby and his mother was washing the clothes in a nearby river, uh, one of the neighbors came and told uh, Krishna's mother, your child is eating mud. And so she came and scolded him and he said, why are you eating mud? Don't you know it's not good for you? Open your mouth. Show me where the mud is. And when Lord Krishna opened his mouth, uh, Maya Shoda, his mother, saw the cosmic vision of the galaxies and the stars. And, and she almost felt like fainting, thinking she was having a, a, a different experience in her own body. And so soon Krishna came back and started smiling again. So he would show his leelas and become a child again, almost as if he was just a human being, whereas in reality he is an avatara or superhuman. This episode po poetically shows that if one has removed vikshepa, vikshepa means distraction, there will be a glimpse of cosmic consciousness. You will realize that within your heart, a heart that has appeared to be so cramped, there is expansion beyond human imagination. And this is why sages and saints guide us to do meditation, to go within, to chant our mantra, japa, and uh, the holy names. And so we can go within our heart and experience that consciousness expansion. When aspiration yawns, so to speak, it reveals to you the staggering possibility of encompassing the entire universe within your consciousness. So this is not totally out of the realm. We are a microcosm of that large macrocosm, the God who has created these galaxies and universes and black holes and light years and all this concept that is way beyond the realm of science and our human minds is also within us. The same, just like one grain of rice is the same as all the other grains of rice. When one grain is cooked, you can assume that the rice is now cooked. Much in the same way, you don't have to look for God in billions of things in the universe. All you have to do is go within deep, sincerely in your heart and open that expansion, feel that energy. God resides in every atom and he is within your own heart also. So let's move to another episode, the naming ceremony for Krishna and Balarama. Soon the time arrived for the naming ceremony of Krishna and Balarama, the two brothers. Again, to remind you, uh, Balarama is the seventh child of Devaki who was born in Rohini's um, um, Nanda's second wife Rohini and the eighth child is Krishna who was born in um, Devaki's womb and Vasudeva brought him to Nanda and he is being brought up there. So Vasudeva, the imprisoned father of the two boys, secretly requested that Gargacharya, his family priest, go to the home of Nanda and Yashoda in Gokul to perform that ceremony. So this, this was a sanskara. These days we just name the child on, 
on the most popular name or without any um, uh, whatever we like. But in the past, in the Gurukul system, Sanatan Dharma, Hindu tradition, this was a big ceremony and the priest was invited and it would be based on their stars and qualities and generally the name meant something and uh, something holy, something spiritual. So the child could develop good traits and become a good human being also. So that's uh, according to that tradition, uh, Vasudeva Ji, because each um, last name in the Kuls were different. So Gargacharya um, had to do the naming ceremony because uh, Vasudeva Ji knew in essence Krishna was Devki's child, not Yashoda's child uh, and Nanda's child. So they had to be, be um, uh, initiated by their own uh, priest of their structure. This is how the process used to work at the time and there was deep science behind it which we can discuss some other time. But but when Gargacharya, who was a great ascetic and sage, arrived, Narada was delighted to see him. Receiving the sage warmly, uh, I'm sorry, not Narada, Nanda, Nanda ji. Um, Sage Narada, of course, is always delivering celestial messages all over the world. But in this case, it was Nanda, uh, uh, Krishna's father, uh, Krishna's um, foster father, so to speak, in today's terms, uh, and uh, Yashoda, foster mother. They, um, because Devki's child, he was born as Devki's child, but now being brought up by his uh, foster parents, Nanda and Yashoda. Nanda said, O oh, sage, I am delighted to have you in our home. Please inform the naming ceremony for my sons. As you recall, uh, Vasudeva, was a close friend of his. Nanda did not know that Krishna and Balrama were not his sons. Gargacharya replied, I will be delighted to perform the naming ceremony. So as we just said, even though they were foster parents, the divine Leela was such since they also had a baby daughter at the same time who became Devi and eventually we have already discussed all this in the past. So this is just like a reminder of the uh, past satsangs um, and the Devi uh, told uh, Kans that the eighth child will destroy you. So that's uh, when uh, the they weren't even aware how this whole Leela happened. That's why because God willed it. It was God's desire to be brought up in that place and for his Leela and cosmic illusion to work. But now they are ready, getting ready for the naming ceremony. So Gargacharya replied, he said, I will be delighted to perform the naming ceremony, but it should be done in secret because Kansa knows that I am the family priest of Vasudeva. His fears may lead him to erroneously conclude that your sons are actually Vasudeva's sons and that somehow secretly they are being brought up by you. So Gargacharya ji um, said the right thing because the kids were really belonging to Vasudeva and Devaki but he explained it in a way that Nanda could understand. Therefore these sons of yours will be in danger unless we perform the ceremony in secret. Again because of the um, Kansa's fear of uh, the eighth child killing him. Nanda agreed and then they went into a cow shed where Garg began to perform the naming ceremony. Turning to Balrama, he said, this child's name will be Rama, one who delights all hearts. And since his strength, strength means Bal, Bal, he is boundless, he will be called Balrama or Rama with, with unbounded strength. Further, since he will bring about unity among conflicting factions, he will also be known as Sankarshana. Sankarshana, the power to attract. So that's what his elder brother got named as Balrama. Turning to Krishna, Garga said, this child has incarnated in different ages in different ways. In the present age, Dwapar Yuga, his name will be Krishna because he is swarthy in complexion, which means he was like a dark, uh, a very attractive dark uh, 
swarthy bluish dark blue color so that's why it's called he was called krishna like a blue tinged rain cloud since at one time he was born as the son of Vasude vasudeva he will also be known as vasudeva vasudeva so vasudeva is the father and vasudeva is um, Lord Krishna. So similar sounding is one of the names. So these incarnations have several names, different names through which we um, revere them or we call them. So one of his name is uh, Vasudev. So we say Vasudev, Sutam Devam. Vasudev is the father and Vasudev is Krishna. And uh, um, one of the names but he is popularly known as lord krishna as you all know cleverly the sage does not say that krishna is actually the son of vasudeva and that nanda was merely bringing him up so ordinary people do not know that krishna is not an ordinary soul he is going to do great deeds for all of you by his help you will overcome all your troubles your son will grow to be a great personality in quality in wealth in beauty in glory in power no one will be equal to him he will be equal to narayana himself lord vishnu therefore look after him with great care these are all the beautiful things um, the uh, gargacharya ji the guru told um, Nandaji. Naturally, these words thrilled the heart of Nanda and he felt exceedingly blessed. From then on, the two boys who crawled about on their hands and knees, delighting their families, were known by their spiritual names, Krishna and Balarama. So this was the name cer naming ceremony and we will study the mystical uh, meaning and another episode in tomorrow's satsang this is swami nikhilanand om tat sat